Why are you? It's a family. I, I, I built I built a great relationship with Coach Odom. Um, I, when it, before I came up, I got a guy, our O-line coach at my high school, his name is Lee Hayes. He coached with Coach Odom down at Houston. And he told me straight up, like, he's a good guy, but he's going to be honest with you, and he's going to let you know, like, from the jump how he is and how he's going to coach you. And I just love that. Like, I love an honest guy. He's going to let me know from the start. Definitely. Um, quick background for you. He and I played at the same high school, oh. and he was a much better athlete than I was. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard about his running back exploits? Uh, I've seen a little bit. You've seen the video? Yeah. Oh, my God, that guy could play. <laughs> he could. He I could. actually covered some games of his as a sports writer. I'd go back and I'd be like, hey, yeah, I get to cover Ada, sure. And I'd go back and I'd be like, who is this Brian Odom guy? He's <laughs> eating people alive. Yeah, people he, were afraid to tackle him. He was a little tank, man. He, <laughs> he had a little speed behind him. Good stuff. So, Coach Riley on that list, too, for you, I guess? Yeah, I talked to Coach Riley I'm thinking bit. about, like, trust and commitment. And yeah, of course. Communication with those guys and – How's, yes, that, how's that working out for you? Um, man, I I trust Coach Riley a lot. You know, I don't I don't talk to him as much as I talk to Coach Odom. But again, like we're both small town boys. So I mean, we yeah we got similar personalities. Like I, I feel like me and Coach Riley are similar in a lot of aspects. I mean, like just small town, dirt, blue collar. Like w we know how to get down and get it. And I mean, that's what I like about him. Like I feel like he's grimy, nasty, and he'll coach you. You know. And that's what I love about Coach Odom, too. You know, Those guys, I feel like they'll get after you and love you and coach you hard. and They're damn sure going to make you play hard. And that's yeah. what I love about them. Did you successfully reclassify? Is that over? Are you 2021 um, still now? Or are you still 22? Uh, I mean, you can consider it a 21. I graduated my senior year December 21. But I, it, I was unfortunately not able to do – well, I was able to do it, but it was just – it was impossible on top of football. I mean, I was trying to get 43 credits wow. in one year, and it was going to be – it wasn't impossible, but it was just going to be a lot of stress on top of football. Mm -hmm. And so I talked to Coach Oda Monday, and then Caleb Kelly got hurt. And so, therefore, he's staying another year, so they didn't have another slot in the 21 class. So my best bet was just to go this whole year, do a semester next year, and come. Okay. So you're going to enroll early, basically, in yes, 22? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sounds pretty complex, though. Yeah, it's, it's a little complex. I yeah. mean, just going back to that deal where, like, I feel like I'm mature enough to be in a 21 class, but then again, it just, I just wasn't able to. So, I mean, I just got to live with it and be a leader of the 22. Come in. Yeah. You committed originally to Tech. Yes, sir. Um, and then decommitted to go to Oklahoma. What what did you like about Tech, and then why did you ultimately? I, I guess I've already asked you why OU, but what was it that pulled you away from Tech? Um, I mean, my defensive coordinator my freshman year, his name is Kenan Kitchens. He's out at Athens now, but um, he he told me just fall in love with the people, not the school, hmm. and I I took that to heart. And I when my at the at the point I did not have the OU offer, and I. In my head, I was not thinking I was good enough to play at OU. I mean, that's just a dead honest truth. And so, therefore, I, I saw what looked like the people. I'm not dogging them or anything. They're great guys and great coaches. And I met Lincoln Riley and his staff, and I was like, this is definitely the people. You know, this hmm. is it. And it's more into the school and chasing dreams, not just people. So, I mean, I'm, I'm chasing a dream, and the school has a legacy. Yeah. You committed to OU, uh, we said January 15th, and then Arkansas, uh, USC, Notre Dame, Florida State starts offering you. So those schools start see that, you got the, that you've committed to Oklahoma, you got the OU offer committed. Is that how recruiting works sometimes, I guess? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, those guys, you know, they, they made a big gutsy move right there. They, I mean... They said that I'm committed. They just want to let me know that I have that offer on the table that they want me. Basically, that's all that they're saying. The same thing that Coach Odom did with Texas Tech. I mean, yeah. I was committed to Texas Tech. He offered me. He said he wanted to coach me and that he'd love to get into person and talk. And I mean, but at this point, I mean, nobody's breaking that relationship with me and Coach Odom. I just don't see it. I can see by the hat and the shirt. <laughs> You're pretty committed. Yes, sir. That's great. Did you have finalists? Did you go through that whole thing of I'm picking this and I'm narrowing it down that date? No, you didn't do any of that, did you? No, no, sir. I didn't, I didn't see a point to it. I mean, 
because it's like I always consider this as dating somebody. You know, you you narrow it down in your head before it even happens. I mean, you got to have a dream, and those dreams come with certain aspects. Okay, well, they've led the Big 12 for the last five years. Why would I down this team that's dominated and led something for five years going on six? It just it would be impossible not to take that off from the table. Was there anything, were there qualities in school, in a school, not not a football program or a football coach, but a school, a school. that you were looking for? Yes, sir. I was looking. I'm a guy who likes to go on tradition and continue to build a legacy. There's nothing wrong with a legacy. Some people like to go build their own, but I want to I wanna add on to that legacy because then it's just the greatest one ever. I mean, I want I want to win national championships, and I want to go somewhere with people like Caleb and all those guys out there that, that want to win a legacy and build one too. I mean, that's all you got to do is find those people around you that want to do the same thing. Yeah. Tell me about your involvement with the Sooner Summit. And we, you know, did Caleb reach out to you? How, how it kind of came about? Well, I mean, it, it, it kind of went public about it, and I, I, I texted him, and I was like, hey, bro, like, is this, is this what we're doing? He was like, yeah, like August 21st, like, see you down there. And I was kind of like, all right, good deal. I'll see you down there the 21st. Like, let's do it. Yeah. What have y'all been doing? Man, hanging out. We went to set in the Waterbury line for about an hour last night. Oh, but yeah. um, I, I, one of my high school teammates plays up here, and we went up there and saw his dorm. And then we talked to Jalen Conyers, too. Mm -hmm. Those guys last night, and then we came to the hotel and just watched TV. And then this morning, we just hung out with each other and ate breakfast. That's about it. So the big stuff's tonight, tomorrow night. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Are you gonna be here for both of? Yes, sir. Dinner. Tonight's top golf. Yeah. yeah. Top golf. I'm gonna show my swing. You know, I know how to play a little bit of golf. <laughs> Sounds fun. Yeah. Think it'll get competitive? Oh yeah, of course. No doubt. No doubt. What What do you think that says about Caleb and his family? to not only organize this, but th this is a, a an opportunity for him to recruit additional guys. Yeah, this, this says a lot about Caleb. He's a he's a leadership guy, you know. He, he, he can take the reins whenever you need him to. He can show you that he's a leader. And I mean, he has a vocal vo voice. He isn't afraid to speak about something or have any ideas that he has on his mind. I mean, like, this kind of takes a lot of effort from the Williams family in general to just come all the way down here from D.C. and like host this thing. Like it's, it's a cool deal and I like it. It's pretty cool to them. Mm -hmm. Have you guys figured out whether you're going to play this fall? Uh, Get your schedule out and stuff like yeah, that? Yes, sir. We, get, we have our schedule out at Cooper. We um, Our first game is the 25th. We play Cap Rock, Amarillo Cap Rock. So and, it's um, full speed ahead is what it sounds like. Yeah, that's what it sounds like, hopefully. Um, I mean, hopefully that's what happens. I want to play ball. I've been itching to hit somebody. Yeah. Have you uh, run into any challenges training? You can't have spring practice. and No spring practice. It's been kind of hard, I mean, but you just got to have that that mindset that I want to get better each and every day. And you, you, you can't have any slowdown or chokes about it. I mean, if you, if you have dreams and you want to get to the next level and the next level after that you have to work for it, nothing's going to be handed out to you. I mean, Maybe at your high school, you're a high school legend, but you're going to have to wake up and realize someday there's somebody out there working harder than you, and you're going to have to beat them. I just wake up with that mindset, and I got to get better each and every day. What's your What's your why? What do you do it for? Uh, my family, my mom, my sister. I mean, I, I tell me more about them. Um, my mom and my sister, we've 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 kind of been through rough times together, and. It ain't always been the best, and I was blessed to get out of that situation. I want to help them get out of that situation and let them know they don't have to worry anymore. I mean, that's the greatest thing you can ever do is tell your parents they don't have to work anymore. You know, it's just wonderful to do that. And I, that's always been my dream. It's always something bigger than you that you're gonna to have to face one day and realize something out there is bigger than you, and you're gonna to have to do something that's bigger than you to get them to a better place. Wow, sounds like some challenges. Yeah, of course. I mean. I've just had to grow up, you know, sooner than a lot of people are. That's why I feel like I'm I'm mature enough to go into the 21 class, just because I've had to grow up in certain aspects of life that most people don't even think of, you know? Like, I, it's been times where the only time I've eaten is at school. And I mean, I realize some people have stories out there similar to that, but I mean, when you're that guy, you know, it's very different to have to go to school and you stay in a hotel with your mom and your sister 
and the boys want to come over and hang out at your house, and you can't do that. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's very different growing up, and I mean, it's it's just a difficult life. If, if most people, some people understand, some people don't. I mean, life throws a lot of obstacles at you. You, know, you got to learn to overcome and get over that obstacle. Yeah.